Hi, my name is Sarah Danaher, and I'm the Jenkins MBA Admissions Recruiter. Thank you so much for joining us for our first ever Jenkins MBA Spotlight Series. Whether this is your first episode or your 10th, we're really happy you're here. Today, my colleague, Riley Hutchison, Assistant Director of Admissions, and I will be sharing with you some stories and experiences from some of our amazing students and alumni. This 10-part, five-week series will feature interviews, personal success stories, as well as first-hand tips and tricks for admission. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoy. Well, thank you so much for joining us once again for another installation of the Jenkins MBA Spotlight Interview Series. I am here with my colleague, Sarah Danaher, and we have Scott England, as well as Lizzie Recklau joining us today. They are both first year Jenkins MBA students. So Lizzie and Scott, would you mind just briefly introducing yourselves, telling us what you do for work, um, any fun facts about yourself and anything that you would like to share? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I will take that first. Um, so like Riley said, my name is Lizzie Recklau. Um, so I actually went to NC State for my undergraduate as well. Um, I started as an accounting major and transitioned to psychology, which is where I stayed for the remainder of my undergraduate career. Um, and I also worked in research as a research assistant here at NC State. Um, upon graduating, I worked in both inpatient, inpatient and outpatient mental health, um, both in clinical and administrative capacities. So um, how I kind of um, made my way professionally is I was dead set on clinical care. I was going to take that gap year. I was going to come back and get licensed. I was going to work in a practice, you know, the whole nine yards. Um, I quickly learned working both inpatient and outpatient it is physically and emotionally draining. And, you know, I wanted a career that was going to be sustainable for me. And so I realized psychology is not going to be it forever, but I did love my work. Particularly, I worked with um, a neurohealth center. We did TMS therapy, which is transcranial magnetic stimulation. Um, so I'd be more than happy to fill in the blanks there. It sounds kind of like a mouthful, um, but that's what I've done professionally um, for the last uh, three to four years. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Scott? My career, which is a uh, little longer than yours, Lizzie. So I've been, uh, <laughs> I've been the Research Triangle Park now for uh, about 30 years. Um, got my undergraduate at a small school in Pennsylvania. I got a master's at Johns Hopkins. And now this is, uh, I'm at the MBA program at Jenkins. Um, and uh, I've been in the community, uh, mostly in SaaS, uh, mostly VC-backed SaaS plays, including founding my own company, which is, uh, which is still around. Uh, but after a decade, I chose to transition and a uh, little less stress and in investor relations and all that, that stuff. So currently I work for a very large uh, software company called Progress. Uh, they're publicly traded. Uh, they have a major office here and um, I'm a strategic account manager I manage uh, a handful of global accounts that are very large. And I have, I think, the dubious distinction right now of having the largest quota in the entire company. So um, this year has been very interesting for me. And a fun fact, I own extremely large hounds. I have an Irish wolfhound and I have a very rare otter hound. Uh, the total weight of those dogs is probably close to 300 pounds. So uh, my youngest son is at NC State, by the way, he's a junior. Uh, Lizzie, he's in psych. So we'll see how that goes. I'll share your story. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, and uh, so the food bills haven't gone down is my, is my point. <laughs> the dogs, I still have elevated food bills. Well, thank you so much, guys. It really sounds like you have strong connections to NC State University. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why you chose and how you heard about Jenkins MBA in particular? Um, let's go ahead and start with you, Scott. Well, yes. And as I had uh, mentioned, I have a younger son there. So I'm part of the uh, Wolfpack Nation already. And that gave me some exposure. Uh, a lot of the exposure I've had over the years is working with uh, MBA grads from, from the program. So they're well connected in the community here, which was a big part of my decision, uh, especially given um, the venture community, which is getting better here. But I've always been impressed by the quality of the candidate. 
um, strong technical base, strong analytical base, and yet I found that um, many of these candidates come out a little more humble. The, you know, the big thing for me was experiencing the, these uh, graduates from the program in person and in depth, right? So seeing the quality of their work, their ability to be coached, their ability to learn, work hard, um, were always impressive to me. And I have a fairly, fairly wide uh, exposure to, to different, uh, different MBA programs and the people I've worked with. The time and again, I come back to this program. Perfect. And so why did you choose to come here after hearing about it, Lizzie? Thing that brought me back to state and probably will time and time again is the program. I mean, it's down to the quality of the education that you get for the money that you're spending. Um, you know, and kind of um, kind of go off what Scott said about the hum the humbleness of the students. I think that comes from just the way the school is humble. It produces quality and it doesn't rely on the name of NC State, even though it is so recognizable at this point, especially within the, you know, Raleigh and research triangle. It wants to prepare you to actually be a productive member of society and a productive member of the business world, um, whether that be in psychology or any um, other field. Um, the really strong emphasis on they want you to be prepared. You know, you want to be the best you can be and NC State has a plethora of tools that they give to you. And again, I may be biased because of my undergraduate experience, but I never um, had a doubt in the quality of education I was gonna get from MBA. You know, this is a crazy time going on in the world. Um, everybody's experiencing, experiencing the effects of a global pandemic. So I wanted to ask each of you um, the reasons that you decided to go back to the Jenkins MBA, you know, take that leap of faith to get your graduate degree during COVID-19. Great question, uh, really, truly. So in my case, it was the intellectual stimulation uh, more so uh, than anything else. Um, Number one. Number two, it, it was brushing up on skills that had frankly atrophied. Uh, and to, to um, be able to relate a little better to those around me, especially, and I mean no aspersions by this other than younger people uh, that I might be that I might be encountering. Uh, so the, the latest on marketing theory, which is relevant to the class I'm taking now. Um, it, it's, it's been superlative for me because the, the professors I've had so far have been very engaging. Um, they're the right type of pace for me. And so when I was evaluating the program and then the pandemic hit, it was, it, it was really a matter of my comfort had already been elevated. That yes, we can do this, that the online program has the kind of uh, delivery and thought through process that would make, it, uh, make someone like me successful. Uh, but ultimately this has been a gift. Uh, during this time because I have the time and I can stay engaged and it's useful. So it turned out to be an awesome decision, not the other way around. I love it. And what about you, Lizzie? Yeah, so it looks a little bit different um, because I am the full-time in-person, um, but as of right now, all of our classes are mostly online um, or pretty much exclusively. Um, I had pretty much made the decision and locked in before the pandemic had hit. Um, NC State was actually the only school I ended up applying to. Um, I said, if it's not NC State, it's not for me and it's not for right now. Um, so I decided to kind of go pedal to the metal, all or nothing. Um, especially I was actually working in healthcare when the pandemic hit, <laughs> which is an interesting place to be. Um, but really, you know, not just during the pandemic, but also prior to, I really chose to go back to challenge myself, the intellectual um, stimulation that I had been missing in an entry level position with little to no room for growth, um, really pushed that. And, you know, there's no better time than now. And, you know, there's always going to be something that's going to be preventing you from doing something in the most optimal way, but adjusting to that and um, being able to, you know, carry on through. I've seen through, you know, the admissions process and through the like onboarding with all of us and 
um, our career team, everyone is really, you know, going back to what Sarah said about flexibility um, and what Scott said about comfortability, um, knowing that you're in good hands um, and knowing that though it's not the same, it's not less than, you know, because I was, you know, I had the idea once I got my admissions letter, I'm going to be back on NC State's campus. I'm going to be in that environment. Um, but being comfortable with the alternative was definitely um, easier to swallow than you'd think. Um, yeah. Now, I know you both are only a couple months into your courses, but what have been some of your first, your first impressions, experiences, and have there been any special projects or classes that have really stood out to you thus, thus far or you've greatly enjoyed? Yeah, so my first impressions um, are all positive. Um, again, to harken back to the flexibility, things have been changing on a week by week basis, but my academics have still been challenging and rigorous, but doable. Um, so my biggest first impression has been with my cohort. Um, I love the cohort style. Um, it's so supportive and collaborative and the team-based work that we do um, you know, that has been based on our strengths and weaknesses, I think is such an innovative idea for pairing us up. Um, I've felt challenged. I really have, um, but I have felt better for the challenge and I have felt stronger and smarter um, for all of the, you know, things that we've been put through, um, especially the last week. I think we had two exams and a case brief and then a case competition. <laughs> all in the same week. So I'm just coming off a pretty crazy week, but I'm sitting on the back end of that week saying, gosh, look at all those things I learned last week um, that I'll carry with me through the rest of the program and probably for the rest of my life. Um, and then kind of to go to that second point about the special project, um, actually the case um, that we just did, um, we did a mini case competition that was hosted by our um, second years in the case um, competition a club where um, we were split up in our teams and we were challenged to come up with a new product and to and we only were given two days to do so which mimics what you would be given in the real world but the opportunity to you know see something from start to finish in full fruition in such a real world applicable way was really really awesome and kind of made me hungry for the rest of the program <laughs> Um, and also to see how amazingly my cohort performed. Um, they actually, we were supposed to vote a winner <laughs> and the judges are having such a hard time picking the best team that we still don't have an answer <laughs> on who is the winner. Um, and that just shows, you know, how above and beyond we've worked and um, how amazing our cohort is. Um, and I'm sure it's the same for the online as well. <laughs> well, that's a great problem to have. Now, Scott, what have been your first impressions, experiences, and any specific classes or projects that have really stood out thus far? Well, yes. Uh, so first part of the question, the experience has been um, more than I thought it would be in a good way. So uh, the interaction online with, um, with, the, uh, with the class and the teammates that I've had on group projects has exceeded my, my expectations. Uh, it's fluid, um, it's collegial, uh, everyone's open to coaching. And this is all online, though we do things like WhatsApp. We stay in close contact with each other using modern tools. So there's been a real, real pleasant surprise for me um, uh, in terms of the people I'm interacting with and how I'm interacting with them. Uh, second, the quality of the student, which I think is critical here and speaks volumes about the program. Um, I'm working with uh, aerospace engineers. I'm working with a, a woman that is designs Mars rovers. It's just crazy uh, accomplished, smart people. And that was kind of what I thought I was going to get. But now that I'm living it, I can definitely say I'm getting it. And that lifts everyone's boat, right? I mean, smart people tend to feed off each other. And this program has that in spades. Uh, best experience so far, even though I have a limited experience uh, uh, online program is with the marketing management course I have now. 
Um, it could not be more topical. Uh, we had a case study that we just did for Carvana, which is the dispensing cars. You see it on 440 in our case. The, the car uh, vending machine. The vending machine, the vending yeah. machine. Um, so we did an in-depth case study uh, around that. And um, is it a trailing indicator of a completely online market? Certainly it's a disruptor. Uh, their stock has, has skyrocketed this year after the pandemic hit. Uh, so being able to see what their results were before in the business model and then what post pandemic the business model is and how they're proving it out uh, it speaks to the to the program and the topical nature of what we're learning. I'm just delighted. So, so far so good. Well, thank you both for sharing everything about your experience thus far. And the last question that we have for you both is, is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, any helpful tips, tricks, advice, or things that you wish you had known prior to starting the program? So Lizzie, anything you would like to add? Yeah, um, I wouldn't say it's you know something I wish I knew um, because I felt very well informed prior to coming to the program. Um, my advice is take the leap, do it. Um, because the longer you wait, the less time you have in that new career path, especially, you know, for full time, um, the whole, you know, goal is to, you know, for career switchers or for those that are making a drastic change in their career path, um, it is going to just rocket ship you into your future. And the most valuable thing that we have right now is our time and you're not gonna be able to get it back um, and you're not going to be able to get back that year you waited to make that decision for your future. Um, NC State is the best inv investment I've ever made. I have thought so, so much that I came back twice <laughs> that I'm here again. Um, and you know, this is gonna sound like a marketing ploy and I swear it's not, but there is something special about NC State and there's something different about an NC State student. You feel it the second you walk on campus. You feel it the second you interact with someone. You know there's a hunger, there's a knowledge, there's a coachability, there's a diversity. Um, there is just this humbleness to an NC State student and NC State is an um, institution. And I mean, I could say this till the day I die, but NC State is worth it if you're thinking, I mean, do I go with this, you know, private school that I, you know, know, or, you know, it's my parents' alma mater, don't. <laughs> go to, I know that sounds crazy, but NC State will be the best investment of your life. Awesome. Thank you so much for adding all of that. And what about you, Scott? Anything else you would like to add? Uh, Lizzie said it as well, and I'll restate it for those that are a little older. Uh, jump back in. I just just jump back in. Uh, the the things I'm already learning uh, from the cohort uh, that I have, which is across the board, right? There's thirty somethings, there's fifty somethings like me. Uh, don't be afraid to do it. Uh, it is it is stimulating. It is enjoyable. Uh, I'm certainly learning a lot uh, from those around me, and I perceive I'm offering a lot because my experience is different. Um, that's what makes a program good. So jump, jump back in. It doesn't matter how old you are or what your aspirations are. For me, it's different than Lizzie's. Uh, I am on the downslope of my career, but that doesn't mean I don't like learning. Uh, and this has been uh, great for me, and during the pandemic, even more so. The final thing I'll, I'll offer is pragmatic. And having put one kid through college at UNC um, and the other at NC State now, uh, so I... To me, the, the, the economics speak volumes as well. What I mean by that is uh, value to dollar. Um, NC State is, you get a great education for a great value. And frankly, that weighs pretty importantly on, not, on everyone, right? Um, I did look at other programs and got pretty far down, but uh, when I critically evaluated what I was getting from NC State versus those programs for the money and then the future, uh, the future potential it was easy. You, you got the, the program is a fantastic value for what you're getting. So do it, even if you're in your 50s or 60s. Come back. You won't regret it. 
Well, thank you both so much for taking the time out of your week to speak to Sarah and I today. And to those of you that are tuning in and watching, thank you for joining us for another episode of our Jenkins MBA interview series. If you have any questions, if you hang on for just one second, we'll have some contact information up on the slide. Please do not hesitate to reach out to any of us with any questions that you have. We are more than happy to help, but thank you so much and tune in again next week for the next two episodes of the Jenkins MBA Spotlight interview series.